Uh, we're just talking a little bit of market news before we went to the break, but I want you guys to take a look over here at the screen that I have up now. You go to, let's just start from the beginning on it, right? You go to tfnn.com, you navigate over here to newsletters. I suggest checking out everything else as well. But you scroll down here, you get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, I have said it before, but this is such a thorough newsletter. Basil also has a ton of subscriber webinars that you need to check out. And so if you subscribe and he starts one of those, it's fantastic because you get access to them. And that's fantastic if you want to learn how to trade uh, as well and you're starting from really any position. Um, Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I am doing well, too. I'm curious to hear what you have to talk about today. Obviously, semiconductors blowing up, NVIDIA really blowing up. Uh, you have crude on the rise. I don't know. I want to hear what your thoughts are of what's going on because it is an interesting market. I think the the correct term should be rocketing up. That's Long right. Enough could have too many. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, let's just do this. So we're looking at the Dow on the left uh, in the Chapman Wave methodology. The idea is let me just scroll this so I'll get this across there. Um, is to identify the lowest low bar, um, see if it goes higher. Count each successively higher peak. If it goes to uh, peak B or leg B, you want to see whether or not it's going to upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode. And if it goes to a buy mode, the implication is that whatever you're following, whether it's a one minute chart or a one day chart or it's a weekly or a monthly chart, <clears throat> you should get in a buy mode at least four higher peaks alphabetized sequentially and alphabetically. A, capital A on the upside, uh, uppercase, and the downside is lowercase. A, B, C, and D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. You can have your sharpest decline, or you can recycle, or you can even do, and I'll show you something in NVIDIA in a moment, <clears throat> where within three bars, you make a new high after D, and that gives you an instant restart, which means there's a chance you could have four higher peaks from that level. Mm. So let's go through this. So we've got the Dow, <clears throat> went to a leg, D. In the daily chart on the 20th of May at 40,077. On that day, we actually started. We, we've been long for a long time, a um, couple of years actually, but I did start a short position. <clears throat> we had taken off a of trading uh, long right the next day. So we've been short from the high of the 20th, and it's come down quite sharp. It's been one of the weaker indices. <clears throat> and Right here, there are uh, two patterns that I'm talking about for subscribers. One is where you get a, a rising lows and much higher highs, and then it arches over. That arch becomes like a cup, like an um, like an H pattern. You come down sharply, roll over at a peak A or a B, and if you start taking out the left side low, and that would be 38,000, that would be a problem. So here we are, 38,768, holding okay, but the nine period moving average is weak. And the weekly chart has started a cup formation with a double top from that peak D to just a fractionally higher high at that 40,077 level in May. And that gives you a peak E. But we've actually gone sideways. So I wanted to give you the scenario to say, even with the weakest indice, the weekly charts are still holding really well. That's number one. Number two is <clears throat> we have got a leg D in the monthly chart, and it has what I call a Chapman wave. I'll talk about this tomorrow in my uh, um, Tiger Technician's Hour at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It has an inverted green Chapman wave Roman candle, and that's just it's an inverted one. And just basically, it says if any any two day period, the Dow in the next, uh, I'd even say the next, I'd even go into July, even if it makes a peak D, if it holds above 39,300, closes there for two days, there's a good chance we'll take out the 40,077 high. So that, those are the implications. Now, what we're looking at, so we're, we're short on a shorter term, although it's actually now, now a few weeks on the Dow, uh, but the longer term still looks very positive. Now, what I want you to say is that when you spoke about the uh, semiconductors, so we can look at the SMH, that's the, semi, the Van Eck Semiconductor ETF. Here we are, leg D in the monthly chart, very strong technicals. Mm -hmm. Leg F slash C, there's an alternate count, that instant restart I was talking about a little while ago, that's right here in the weekly chart. So there's a chance that we could pull back and then go to a D in the weekly chart. How deeply we pull back depends on the daily chart. But here you can see we've had 
Uh, remember, the idea is a buy signal to a buy mode means you should go to at least a peak D, the fourth highest peak. Well, we did that once from the low that was made 19th of April uh, in the, of, law, of uh, this year at 198.44. And then the nine period moving average held so strongly that it recycled, went up to another at 250.85 um, late May, and it pulled back sharply. And now we're in leg D again. And purely on a technical basis, this is what we're looking at. The nine period move, the price is way, this is the daily chart on the left, weekly in the middle, monthly on the right. Mm -hmm. The price is way above the green nine period moving average, and that's a positive. The green is way above the 14 period moving average. To get that green to turn pink, in other words, for the nine period moving average to actually go underneath to close underneath the 14, you probably have to see a dive into the 250 area in the semiconductors. So you still have to wait a lot for, for some kind of sharp reversal, which we haven't had since this, uh, in fact, just one little brief moment over there. But since that low uh, the 1st of June, um, it's, it's been very positive. So that's the, and then you were speaking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA is... Uh, trading in leg E, and it went to 136.33, and it's just been a consistent move to the upside. Yeah. So my my point here is that to get the the uh, whatever sector you're looking at to get it to turn negative, you you look at it as tides. So the the daily tide can actually turn very negative, but the weekly tide can still hold very well. And this is what we're looking at in Nvidia to actually get Nvidia to to basically change from a buy mode to a sell mode. That means it gets a sell signal upgraded to a sell mode. You probably have to see it in the 118s, and here it is at 135. So that's the first step. So I'm doing one step at a time. So I said to subscribers, um, they are getting, there's no question that on a purely technical basis, there are signs, there are some signs that the uh, tech sector is getting heavy. But I've used Microsoft, which we've been long since 338, and we're still long. Um, and it's at 4.45 right now, together with the AIQ, which is the uh, ETF for the uh, Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF, which is at an all-time high as we speak. So this, this sector, which and I, I would say Microsoft in a sense predominates because it's in uh, cloud, it's in operational system subscription. Um, I'm watching this closely. With, I was speaking to Tom last week we were just about over here in the weekly chart, and I had drawn this pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Stork Leg Formation. It means that there's a long move to the upside, and then there's an oval. It's not a rectangle. It's an oval body shape pattern. And um, that, that's the, the body of the stork. You know, it stands on one leg. And then there's the neck, and that goes above that whole uh, arc of the um, semicircle. And when that starts to turn down, I call that the beak. And that's really the clue. So uh, um, Microsoft right now, I've got it as a peak B. I think there's just enough room to go to a couple of higher highs. And then we've got to be careful. I think in a sense, for me, it's a bit of a benchmark for the, for the tech sector. So this is going to be something we're watching very closely. I'll do more of this in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technicians Hour and with, for subscribers to my opening call. Thank you, Basil. Fantastic. Thanks.